Hello, this is Dr. Marge and we will continue with the second step in tooth preparation, resistance form. Resistance form refers to the internal form of the cavity which enables the tooth and the restoration to best resist or withstand the forces of mastication. It would prevent fracture of the tooth or the restoration. So, ano yung form na gagawin mo sa cavity to prevent fracture of the tooth or fracture of the restoration? When we talk about resistance form, it also prevents stress to the tooth or restoration. So, how to achieve resistance form? The preparation must be of adequate depth. 0.5 to 1 millimeter into sound dentine. When you say 0.5 to 1 millimeter into sound dentine, that means from the DEJ area, your pulpal floor should be 0.5 millimeter into the dentine. Okay. So in this case, even if your caries is just in the enamel area, you will still have to do your preparation into the dentine. Again, you will still have to do your preparation 0.5 to 1 millimeter into the sound dentine. So in your typodont, you don't have DEJ, you don't have enamel and dentine. So we just do approximation. So when we do approximation, we use the cava surface margin as your reference point. So from the cava surface margin, the depth of your pulpal floor should be 1.5 to 2 millimeters from the cava surface margin. But in the actual patient, your reference point is always a DEJ. So it should be 0.5 to 1 millimeter into the dentine or from the DEJ area. Next, it must have smooth and usually flat pulpal and axial walls which meet the remaining walls at a definite but rounded angles. So all line angles are defined, defined but not sharp. So major ira round ng konti. Yan mga line angles should be defined but not sharp. So in this preparation, this class 2 preparation, you have to remember that any sharp line angle in your cavity will be a stress-bearing area. Again, any sharp line angle in your cavity is a stress-bearing area. So what you want to achieve is a defined line angle, smooth floor, smooth walls, flat pulpal floor with no sharp line angle. Okay? So, look at this premolar. Mandibular mandibular first premolar. In this mandibular first premolar, you will see that the pulpal floor follows the slope of the buccal cusp tip to the lingual cusp tip. So, pag ganun din yung, pababa din yung iyong pulpal floor. Why? Because in this tooth, the pulp chamber has a more prominent buccal uh, pulp horn compared to the lingual pulp horn. So, ganun din yun. So, to prevent exposure of the accidental exposure of the pulp horn next resistance forms must consider resistance of tooth to fracture from forces exerted on restoration flat floor will help prevent restoration movement however if you have rounded pulpal floor 
it may allow an amalgam restoration or rocking action. Rocking action. Producing a wedging force which may result in shearing of tooth structure. Magkaka-crack. Okay. Magkaka-crack. And you don't want that. Okay. That's why, how do we achieve resistance form in your preparation? You have flat pulpal floor. You have adequate pulpal floor depth, you have smooth walls, defined line angles but rounded, no sharp line angles in your preparation. Next, surrounding walls are parallel to the line of force. Line of force and perpendicular, all floors are perpendicular to the line of force. Okay, surrounding walls parallel to the line of force and the floors are perpendicular to the line of force. Ito yan, line of force. The force during mastication. Okay. Proper width of the cavity. Proper width of the cavity. If if your isthmus or your dovetail is very narrow, then the amalgam will break during mastication. It will fracture during mastication. So ideally, your dovetail, your dovetail should be one third of the intercuspal distance, cusp tip. Cusp tip, divide into three. So more or less, this is the width of your dovetail. Your isthmus, the narrowest portion of your cavity, is approximately one-fourth of the intercuspal distance. Then we go to the third step in tooth preparation. Retention form. Retention form refers to the internal form of a cavity which enables the restoration to resist displacement through tipping or lifting. You do this in your cavity to prevent the restorative material from being dislodged or removed from the cavity. So, meron mga cases, after one day or after two days, natanggal na yung pasta, yung restoration from the cavity maybe the retention form of your cavity was not properly done so how do we achieve retention form you should have parallel or nearly parallel lateral dentine walls remember enamel walls dentine walls yung inner part of your preparation presence of dovetail this is your dovetail this is your dovetail. I know the dovetail is part of your outline form, but the main benefit of your dovetail is retention form to prevent lateral displacement of your restoration. Again, if we will have a quiz or exam, if the question is, what step in tooth preparation is dovetail, then your answer will be retention form. Board exam question. Number three, undercuts or converging walls. So, paano hindi matatanggal yung pasta? Dapat meron kang undercut dun sa buccal and lingual walls. Buccal and lingual walls only for pit and fissure cavities. So, in this case, around 10 degrees convergence of your buccal wall and your lingual wall. Ito rin, buccal wall sa class 2, and your lingual wall. Okay. So, minsan, kung parallel masyado, parallel masyado, pwede naman lagyan ng undercut. Pwede din yun. So, that is retention form to prevent dislodgement of your restoration. Number 4 is retention groove. 
So, in especially in class 2 cavities, no? it's not enough that you have converging buccal and lingual walls since the area in the marginal ridge is a stress-bearing area. So, to add retention to your restoration, you add retention grooves here. Retention grooves. So, the retention grooves start from B, A, G, point angle. Ito yun. Buko, eggshell, gingival point angle going to the eggshell line angle. Again, it starts with the buko, eggshell, gingival point angle. Going to the exopulpal line angle. Okay. It starts 0.5 millimeters in the BAG area and it becomes shallow, mga 0.2 millimeters near the exopulpal line angle area. On the other side, you have the LAG. Or linguo, eggshell, gingival, point angle, going to eggshell pulpa line angle. In the LAG, it's 0.5 millimeters. In the eggshell pulpa line angle, ar around 0.2 millimeters. So it's deeper near the gingival area. Kaya may retention. Para hindi matanggal. Yung restorative material. Next, you can also add pins, pinholes, or post holes. Okay. When you add pin, the pin should be in the dentine portion of the tooth. For every cusp, for every cusp, you have one pin. For every cusp, you have one pin in the dentin portion only. The problem with pins, uh, sometimes it creates cracks into the tooth. Pag nag insert ka, nag screw ka ng pin, nagkakaroon ng crack. Micro crazing, we call that. Okay. But it increases retention. Again, it increases retention, but does not strengthen the tooth. Again, Pins increase retention but does not strengthen the tooth. Note, outline, resistance, and retention are often accomplished in one technical procedure. Pagka start mo with your pear shaped burr, 245 burr, or 330 burr, you're already doing outline at the same time, resistance at the same time, retention. You can achieve retention form. Converging buccal and lingual walls by using uh, inverted burr. Inverted burr. Remember, ganon, inverted. Para maging converging yung buccal and lingual walls. Okay. Tapos yung mission distal walls mo. Mission distal wall, 2 to 5 degrees only. Sorry. Let me repeat that. Two to five degrees only. Okay. Michel and distal walls. Michel and distal walls slightly diverging towards the occlusal is resistance form. Michel distal wall. You are following the direction of the enamel rods to prevent fracture of the tooth. Or the restoration. Pag bakal and lingual walls mo, converging towards occlusal. Sorry, bad drawing. That is retention form. To prevent dislodgement or displacement of your 
restoration.